Now, South Africa is experiencing a spike in the sale and in the use of heroin and it's having a devastating effect on, uh, uh, and it fuels violent crime and it also funds uh, transnational criminal enterprises. Uh, the spike also has dire health consequences as the increased use of injections by heroin addicts exposes them to HIV, AIDS, infections and hepatitis. The illicit drug in the, uh, in, is estimated to have an annual cash turnover of billions of rands. Despite the heroin industry thriving and spreading rapidly in the country, the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime says the boom in heroin use in the country has gone largely undetected or is misunderstood by the police and the government. It's called for urgent action to prevent a public health crisis in South Africa. So what are the triggers and who are the players behind this lucrative heroin trade? What is the impact on young people and communities? And importantly, how do we stop the scourge? Tonight we speak to Simone Hasem, Senior Analyst at Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime, and Sam Pillay, Director of the Anti-Drug Forum of South Africa. Uh, Simone, please, good evening. Thanks for being with us. But let me start with you. Tell us about this research that was done by uh, one of your partners in ACT and also its findings on that maritime route that is feeding heroin into South Africa and throughout the continent. Sure. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, what our uh, uh, policy brief talks about is the South African market for heroin. Um, this market is the spin-off of a regional transit route. Uh, Afghanistan produces around 90 or 80 percent of the world's heroin, and that heroin leads to three main routes. It used to be that the third route was a very minor route, the southern route, um, which goes from the Iran-Pakistan coast, where heroin is loaded onto dows or onto container ships, where it crosses the Indian Ocean and uh, hits Africa along the East African coast from the north of Kenya all the way down to the north of Mozambique, um, from where it travels by, by a, a network of land routes uh, across the continent and south towards South Africa, and, and then onwards to lucrative markets in Europe. Now, it used to be that this was a very minor route, and previous research that we had done in a, in a large regional study called the, the Heron Coast had showed that um, over the last around 15 years, that route had become much more significant as more and more uh, opium poppy uh, uh, was produced in Afghanistan and there was more heroin supply that needed to be moved. And that this met with uh, wide-scale impunity for drug traffickers along the East African coast, um, which has led to uh, the transit route becoming more uh, more vo higher volumes traveling along that transit route, yeah, and out of that also regional markets developing, including in uh, South Africa. All right. Uh, Simone, let's just illustrate exactly what you're talking about. Now, South Africa is located on a strategic maritime route along the east coast of Africa. Now, the country is both an end destination for local consumption of heroin and for onward shipping to Europe. Uh, here's a look at the maritime route that we're talking about and the African countries that are involved in the heroin trade. Now, heroin is shipped from Afghanistan uh, to the east coast of Kenya. Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique and South Africa are part of the southern route. And then traffickers in Kenya and Mozambique are linked to political interests. Now, Tanzania is cracking down on criminal political re relationships in that country. Violent criminal interests control the heroin trade in South Africa. And then Indian island states and also landlocked Zimbabwe are now also at risk from this uh, drug. So that's just an illustration of what's actually going on. Uh, let me just uh, turn to you, uh, uh, Mr. Pillay, and just talk about the, the, pra the practical <coughs> manifestation sorry, of the increase of heroin on the South African streets. What are we seeing and just, just how bad is it? It's bad. It's scary. Um, the reason why we are experiencing this, the increase, on a regular basis, year after year, uh, is because of the excess. You know, like they explained just now, it's easily available. It, it just comes into our country like in large quantities, and it finds its way right to the street where you live. Um, and what adds to that is the poor socioeconomic conditions, the unemployment levels, the poverty levels, that has a major impact as well in getting more uh, people involved because of the idle minds, idle hands, and uh, depression as well. 
So they have to find something to fill their time, and, and they turn to drugs. Uh, uh, doctor, explain to us how is heroin actually consumed physically? Um, there's different ways of consuming. It's, it can be injected um, if it's in liquid form. Uh, it can be smoked as well. Niope is smoked. You know, it, it's uh, heroin mixed with Dhaka. It's smoked. Uh, it can also be inhaled. Uh, the wunga and the sugars that we find in Durban and surrounding areas, uh, it is uh, inhaled. They place it on a foil, light, uh, use a lighter under the foil, and inhale the fumes that uh, emits from it. Okay. So it can be smoked, injected, uh, as yeah. well as uh, and at, uh, inhaled. Inhaled as well. Okay, let me get back to you, uh, Simone. Who are the main players in the heroin trade in Africa? And then do you know also in South Africa, who are the main players? Who are these uh, dealers? Well, I think we have to make a distinction between different levels of involvement. Uh, in South Africa, there are uh, hundreds, perhaps more, uh, street-level dealers, perhaps thousands, supplying uh, small amounts of drugs to, uh, you know, each one a small consumer base in neighborhoods all over the country. Often those people are in the employ of gangs. Um, they are often themselves very marginalized, often very poor, and usually not making very much money. Uh, higher up, you have people who would control distribution at a larger geographical level. Um, and very f much further up the train, and, and often uh, very much removed from the, the street realities of the drug trade, you have people that we would refer to as kingpins. Um, even above them, you have people in origin countries who may control very large transit routes. So there are very many different levels of involvement, and people who are making uh, m much larger amounts of money are found higher up, um, and who face you know, uh, much fewer risks, largely as a result of impunity. We know who some of those, uh, along the coast, there are, have been quite credible allegations for a long time about the involvement of very prominent business people and very prominent politicians in uh, countries within the region uh, facilitating the trade. In South Africa, we find a, a slightly different scenario. We don't find the same very open uh, allegations of political protection and relationships between political elites and uh, well-known people who are said to be heron kingpins. Though there are several figures within the South African criminal underworld who are very closely linked to drug markets. Um, in South Africa, well, one thing we talk about in the report is that over the last five to eight years, while heroin has been in the country for longer than that, uh, the market really surged and grew uh, in that period. Yep. And that was done partly uh, through deliberate expansion by different criminal networks. That All right, really thank you. Uh, Simone, I'm, I'm going to have to just stop you there. I've just got one quick question there for uh, Mr. Pillay. Mr. Pillay, I'm sure a lot of people watching this, uh, we know this scourge is hitting a lot of our kids and a lot, you know, people's partners and so forth. What do you look for? You know, in terms, if you're a parent, if you want to see maybe your kid is addicted to heroin or maybe they're just starting on such this bad habit, what do you look for? Well, firstly, you will find him losing interest in school or if he's working, he loses interest in work. There's absenteeism on an increase. Um, you find him losing weight. That's a very common one. Uh, not immediately, though. After a few weeks, you lose weight, loss of appetite, obviously. Um, You'll find him spending a lot of time in a toilet. If he spends longer than usual in a the toilet, then there's something wrong, you know, because he will smoke in the toilet, and that to prepare the, the drug itself to get it ready for smoking takes some time. His friends as well. Uh, if his normal, usual friends are not there anymore, he's got new friends, and which are not the so good guys, uh, this is cause for concern. All right, thank you so much, uh, Sam Pile, the director of the Anti-Drug Forum of South Africa. We're talking about the prevalence of heroin in South Africa. And also, uh, Simone Haysom uh, joining us as via Skype, the senior analyst at Global Initiative Against uh, Transnational uh, Organized Crime, just explaining to us how this heroin is actually getting into South Africa and also uh, into other African countries.